Something happened in our town. A child story about racial injustice. Written by Marianne Solano, Marietta Collins, and Anne Hazard. Illustrated by Jennifer Zivoin. This book is dedicated to families who have lost loved ones to racial injustice and to those who are working for a future in which diversity is valued and celebrated and for protectors both big and small. Something bad happened in our town. The news was on the TV, the radio, and the internet. The grown-ups didn't think the kids knew about it, but the kids in Miss Garcia's class had heard some older kids talking about it, and they had questions. After school, Emma asked her mother, Why did the police shoot that man? It was a mistake, said her mother. I feel sad for the man and his family. Yes, the police thought he had a gun, said her father. It wasn't a mistake, said her sister Liz. The cop shot him because he was black. Emma was confused. He is brown, not black, she said. Some black people have dark brown skin and some have light brown skin, Emma's father explained. Black usually means African American. Most of their ancestors were brought here from Africa as slaves. I know what a slave is, said Emma. That's when you have to do whatever the other person says. Yes, slaves had to do whatever white people told them to do, even after slavery ended. White people didn't let black people live where they wanted, go to school with white people, or vote. Who are white people? White people came here from places in Europe or Russia or other countries. We are white, even though our skin is light tan. Did our family do those bad things a long time ago, asked Emma. Yes, answered her mother. Back then, many white people thought that they were better than black people, even though it wasn't true. Liz added, some white people still think most black men and boys are dangerous, even though they're not. Was the man that got shot dangerous, asked Emma. No, her mother said. Shooting him was a mistake. It was a mistake that is part of a pattern. Like the pattern on my blanket, Emma asked. Yes, but this pattern is being nice to white people and mean to black people. It's an unfair pattern. Suppose you had a birthday party and invited everyone in your class except the black kids, her mother said. How would the black kids feel? They would be sad, Emma said, or mad. And you would be missing out because you never know who is going to be your best friend, said Liz. And you can help others to be fair, said her mother. Like telling Anna to stop teasing Ling about her name, asked Emma. Her mother gave her a hug. Yes, just like that. In another house, Josh asked his mother, Can police go to jail? Yes, said his mother. Why do you ask? That white policeman who shot the black man, said Josh. Will he go to jail? What he did was wrong, said his mother. But he won't go to jail, said his father. Why not, asked Josh. Cops stick up for each other, said Josh's brother Malcolm, and they don't like black men. Josh was confused. Why not? Some police are black. You're right, said his mother. Uncle James is a police officer, and so is my friend Kenya. There are many cops, black and white, who make good choices, said his father, but we can't always count on them to do what's right. Malcolm added, I could get stopped by the police just because I'm black, even if I don't do anything wrong. That's not fair, Josh said. 
What if it was a white man in the car? Would the police have shot him? They probably wouldn't have even stopped the car, said his father. Sometimes white people are treated better than black people, said his mother. But it's not right. Everybody should be treated fairly. Josh's mother gave him a hug. We're proud of who you are. Harriet Tubman, Martin Luther King Jr., and Nelson Mandela were strong and brave black leaders. They showed us that we can stand up for our rights and set good examples for others. They were treated unfairly, but helped others learn to be more fair. Some people haven't learned yet, said his father angrily. Why are you mad? asked Josh. I'm mad that we're still treated poorly sometimes, but I can use my anger to make things better, said his father. Black people have a lot of power if we work together to make changes. I have power, Josh said, and I'm smart. His father smiled. You're right, his mother added, and you can change people's hearts by sticking up for someone who is not treated fairly. Like how Malcolm sticks up for me when the kids tease me about my glasses, Josh asked. He tells them to step off. Just like that, his parents said. The next day, a new kid joined Emma and Josh's class. His name was Ahmad, and he was from a country far away. Ahmad didn't know where to sit or what to do because it was his first day in school. He talked a little bit, but it was hard to understand him. He said he was learning English. After lunch, the class went outside to play soccer. Daniel and Sophia picked kids to be on their teams. All of the kids were picked to be on a team except Ahmad. Daniel said Ahmad probably didn't know how to play because he was new. Sophia said Ahmad might not be good at soccer. Josh remembered what his mother said about sticking up for people who are treated unfairly. Emma remembered what her mother said about unfair patterns and birthday parties. All of a sudden, Ahmad wasn't alone. Emma and Josh were leading him to their team. We have enough kids on our team, Daniel said. We don't need him. But Josh was ready. Step off, he said. He's playing. Yeah, said Emma. We don't want to miss out. And just like that, Emma and Josh gained a new friend and started a better pattern in their school.